Today, we'll go over how to speed up a Python function with only one line of code. Then, we'll rewrite the function to take advantage of the GPU. Take a guess right now on how much faster we can get it to go. For our demonstration today, we will implement a Sobel filter. A Sobel filter is useful for detecting edges in images. For example, you might use this in computer vision applications. We'll talk about the algorithm in more detail later. For now, note that there are nested for loops. In the main function, we read the file. Then we convert it to grayscale. Finally, we run the Sobel filter on the image using a timer function. This prints out the elapsed time in milliseconds. We'll use this image. Let's run the script. One minute later. Well, actually 72 seconds later, we have our filtered image. Let's compare the two. The good news, it appears to work. The bad news, it takes 72 seconds to work. Let's work on cutting that time down. Numba is an open source just-in-time compiler for Python. It translates a subset of Python and NumPy code into fast machine code. We'll talk about how it does that in the last section of the video. Let's import Numba. Now we add a decorator. This will tell the Python interpreter to call Numba to convert the Sobel filter function into machine code and execute it. Numba will do this the first time it is called. Subsequent calls to the function will call the machine code directly. Let's run it and see what happens. That cuts down the runtime to about 3.3 seconds. That's a good little improvement. Let's compare this to a C implementation. OpenCV has a Sobel function. It's a Python wrapper around a C function. I expect this to be pretty fast, so let's run it an extra 50 times. Let's run it. The first run is 56 milliseconds. Then it's a 50 millisecond average thereafter. Now I know what you're saying. It would be much faster if you just didn't write shitty code. How dare you? Suggest that I write code. I have ChatGPT do it for me. Let's see if we can speed this puppy up. Python uses what is called duck typing. This means that Numba has to look up the type of an object before it can compile a function that uses that object. We can define the object type in the decorator to help speed up the compile process. Here we tell Numba that we are passing a two-dimensional list of float32. We expect the function to return a two-dimensional list of 8-bit unsigned integers. The closer you get to the metal, the more you gots to know. We also have to tell Numba to import uint8 and float32. Let's run it 11 times altogether. That's somewhat better, 682 milliseconds or so. Previously, it was 3.2 seconds, but we're still well off the 50 milliseconds of the OpenCV version. If the function is parallelizable, that's a funny word, parallelizable. We can tell Numba to run it on multiple CPU cores. We add parallel equals true to the JIT decorator. We also change the range statement to P range. This allows our for loops to be split up and run in parallel. We also have to import P range from Numba. Let's run it 100 times. Mm, 28 milliseconds the first time. This machine has 12 CPU cores. Let's watch their activity when we run the script. The interesting point here is that we haven't changed any of the code. We've added one directive. The way it actually works is pretty transparent to us. There are two things that GPUs are really good at, math and lightweight multitasking. Numba can generate CUDA code directly from the CUDA.JIT decorator. The mechanism is the same as how it generates CPU machine code, but uses a different code generator backend. In the next section, we'll go over how we wrote this CUDA kernel. For now, we'll run it and time the results. 29 milliseconds to run the first time, and subsequent runs are 17 milliseconds. Let's run it a thousand times and watch the GPU activity. It looks like we're using about 75% of the GPU. Here's a table of the measurements against the pure Python implementation. These numbers don't mean much, but under the right circumstances, you can make things a lot faster. Of the numbers, I found just adding the JIT decorator speeding up the code more than 100 times the most surprising. Let's go over writing the CUDA kernel next. Let's see what Wikipedia has to say about this. The Sobel operator uses two 3x3 three three kernels, which are convolved with the original image to calculate approximations of the derivatives, one for horizontal changes and one for vertical. 
Let's scroll down a mite. Oh good, here's some code. That's better. Two sets of four loops. In the first set, we go through all of the pixels in the image. In the second set, we do the actual convolution. This allows us to measure a weighted difference of color between the pixel and its neighbors. We take that and store it in an output array. We do this twice, once left to right and one top to bottom. That gives us two matrices. We combine both of them into one by using a gradient magnitude. We do that by taking the square root of the summation of the squares. With that nonsense out of the way, we can look at some code. Here's our CUDA kernel. We only have to worry about working with one pixel here. To get the pixel offset in the image, we use CUDA.grid. Next, we check to see if the pixels are actually in the image. We are making the assumption here that the kernels are the same size. In these nested for loops, we do the convolution. That's the multiply accumulate part. Finally, we set the pixel value of the output image. That's the nasty square root of the sum of the squares bit. Let's scroll down a little bit. Here we read our image convert it to grayscale, and then make sure that it's float32. Now we defined a grid of blocks. The CUDA compiler will use this grid to schedule the GPU resources. Between 8 and 32 threads per block is usually a good number. The size of the image helps determine the number of blocks. Then we define our kernels. This is for the common 3x3 case. Finally, we allocate our output image. The CUDA kernel call is wrapped in a function which makes it easier for us to time it. The Python list after the function name tells CUDA the grid layout. Parameters follow. Numba will take care of moving the parameters back and forth between the CUDA device and the host. Let's run this a thousand times. The first run takes 55 milliseconds to compile and run. Subsequent runs take 20.7 milliseconds. By copying the memory from the host to the device and back manually, you can save some time. This requires a lot more housekeeping on your part, but saves Numba from trying to figure it out on the fly. For the setup, first we copy the image over to the CUDA device. Next, we allocate room for the output image on the device. And finally, we copy the Sobel kernels over to the device. Now we call the Sobel filter CUDA kernel. We make sure that the CUDA kernel finishes execution. Then we copy the result back to the host. Then in our teardown, we remove everything we placed on the device. Let's give that a run. It takes about 33 milliseconds to compile and run the first time. Subsequent runs take about 16 milliseconds. That's a reduction of around 4 milliseconds. If you're running on a video stream, that's a pretty good little pickup. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the two. It's not as easy to read, but it is faster. How much do you know about interpreters? All there is. Python is a bytecode interpreter. When Python loads a script or module, it compiles it into bytecodes. The Python virtual machine reads the bytecode instructions one by one and performs the operation it describes. On the left, we have the Python source code. On the right, we have the bytecodes to which it compiles. For example, here we create an NP array from a list and assign it to GX that compiles into these bytecodes. It's pretty straightforward. It's all low-level stuff. This one function turns into about 150 lines of code. When the interpreter encounters the number at JIT decorator, it translates the function and calls the LLVM compiler. LLVM compiles the code into machine language, then links and loads it. This is done when the program is running. Here's the assembly language produced for the function. In this case, it's ARM64 assembler. Once the code is loaded and ready to go, it is executed. Subsequent calls to the function will call the machine code version. In this case, the 150 lines of bytecodes translate into about 1800 lines of assembler. Bytecodes are compact. This is one of the advantages it has over compiled code. When the interpreter encounters the numbud CUDA.JIT directive, it does a similar process as the previous JIT. The CUDA compiler gets called during this process to generate CUDA code. You can see that our CUDA function produced around 450 lines of code. This is a very high-level overview of using a JIT compiler and using CUDA code with Python. There was no attempt to write faster code, we just played with some parameters. Notice that we picked an algorithm that lent itself to running in parallel and had a good bit of math in it. That's a great match for CUDA, but engineering is about trade-offs, and you have to make sure that the juice is worth the squeeze when optimizing code. Thanks for watching.